Did you know that all fiat currencies eventually become worthless? And what is your plan to protect your savings and ensure that your hard-earned money isn't destroyed by the politicians? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Voluntary Living Show with me, David James Rodriguez, where we are building a world based on consent, self-ownership, and freedom. And I'm very excited about our guest today because we're talking about solutions to the financial problems that we're all facing on the planet. As mentioned, these politicians are... Um, inflating the money, destroying the purchasing power of your cash and mine. And uh, this gentleman and his organization has been providing solutions for over 20 years. And you're going to be shocked about the silver certificates and some of the other things that I saw uh, recently in real life. And I'm just so impressed by what they're doing. So uh, before we get into the show, uh, welcome to the show, Wayne Hicks, the operations director for the Liberty Dollar Financial Association. Thanks for being here. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so you guys are doing some amazing stuff, and I'd love for you to share, um, you know, a little bit about your organization. Um, I saw the silver certificates in Texas at the Exit and Build Land Summit, and I was just so amazed that you guys are doing this. And I learned a little bit about your founder. Um, we can talk about in his saga of the um, being harassed and kidnapped by the government. Um, but you guys are bringing these solutions forward, and um, I just want the audience to know about these solutions. Uh, because the currencies are very um, weak right now and they're not, they're not stable. So um, what can you tell about the uh, tell the audience about your organization and what you guys do? And then we'll just uh, take it from there. Well, the Liberty Dollar Financial Association has been around for about four years now. We actually um, are the legacy grandchild, you might say of the original Liberty Dollar organization that started back in 1998 when a man named Bernard von Nothaus figured out that money is pretty much worthless mm -hmm. and he wanted to return us to value. Mm -hmm. So he created the silver-backed Liberty Dollar and the silver Liberty coin that mm -hmm. he introduced in, in the United States. And uh, between October of 1998 and sometime in 2000, and uh, I believe it was 2003, maybe early 2004, he got $5 million worth of it in circulation. Now, what it was, it was silver based at $10 per ounce. Okay, now silver was only in the 4 to $5 range back then, but people agreed to accept it at $10 per ounce. So the Silver Liberty was a $10 coin. I'm embarrassed I don't have anything to show right now. <laughs> um, I, I didn't plan well enough for this interview, and I apologize. No but, problem. We'll uh, put some images and some links for the audience here. Okay. The, uh, the Silver Liberty was a $10 coin, and people happily accepted it all over the country. And then he also issued paper currency he called warehouse receipts. And warehouse receipts, as you know, have had a long history of being used as negotiable instruments. And that goes all the way back to common law five, 600 years ago. Mm. The, the warehouseman would give you a receipt for what you put in his warehouse, and that receipt could be traded. It could be used to as collateral for a debt. Uh, it could be assigned to someone else. And if it was a bearer warehouse receipt, then it automatically became whatever you put in the warehouse became the property of whoever had that warehouse receipt. Mm -hmm. Well, Bernard's warehouse receipts were denominated in U.S. dollars, one, five, ten, and later 20, and eventually there was even a 50. But mm. uh, they, they were all based on that silver at $10 per ounce. Mm. So people paid a little more than spot, but they were getting the money at, at a discount. That was one of Bernard's big uh, mottos was you buy it at a discount, spend it at a profit. So mm -hmm. if you paid $8 for a $10 coin or a $10 stack of certificates and you spent them at the $10 base, then you made $2 by spending money. And it mm -hmm. was a wonderful idea. Um, it went along real well until 2003. Like I say, you got 5 million people or $5 million in circulation. Uh, with about, uh, I believe it was about 25,000 people were involved in it by then. And then he met me. Mm -hmm. And that sounds egotistical, but let me explain. 
<laughs> I had gotten involved in the Liberty Dollar in uh, late 2000, and then I really got deeply involved with it in 2003, and I just thought it was great. So I started mm -hmm. telling the whole town about it, and I even I took out commercials on the radio, and I did a little radio trivia show, and mm -hmm. I had people coming in the door all the time to find out what was going on. Mm. And within a couple of months, I had the whole town of Berryville, Arkansas taking it. Nice. The whole town. Everybody up to and including, at the time, Walmart. Wow. We were spending it at Walmart. And wow. we thought it was just great. So I called Bernard one day. I said, hey, we got the whole town taking it. And he said, you're lying. I said, no, seriously, <laughs> come see. So he did. He showed up. And we went all over town. And he just had a blast going from one business to the next and spending his money. Never mm. once having to explain it to anybody. Wow. Because that's what he'd always done. He explained it to people. Mm -hmm. So he just laughed his head off the whole day. And finally he said, Wayne said, you've got to start a school and teach other people how to do this. Mm. So that's what we did. We started a school. We mm -hmm. called it Liberty Dollar University. And people flew in from all over the country to my little place there in Arkansas to learn how to get it in circulation in their communities. Mm. And before we really knew what was happening, uh, by the time the government stepped in in late 2006 and said, oh, this is a bad thing. We can't have this. Mm. Uh, we'd gone from 5 million in circulation to over 85 million. Wow. And we had communities all over the United States where it was a fairly common thing. Mm. And that was wonderful. But then the government figured out what was going on. Mm -hmm. People liked that money. They liked this money that had real silver backing it. Mm -hmm. So they, at first, put out public service announcements saying, oh, it's against the law to even have Liberty Dollars. No, it wasn't. Never was. Mm -hmm. Well, it's against the law to have those coins. No, it's not. Never mm -hmm. was. Let me tell you something. There was a time when the Secret Service, if you called them up, actually had something on their, on their answering service that said, if you're calling about the Liberty Dollar, press whatever number, and it would tell you that it was a lawful alternative currency. Mm. But it was not legal tender. Okay? Wow. And somewhere along the line, we had the Learning Channel contacted me and wanted to do a documentary about uh, what we were doing with the Liberty Dollar in Arkansas. So, well, if you're going to talk to me, you have to talk to Bernard. Mm -hmm. So, they sent a crew down to film around me, and then they sent one to D.C. where Bernard was and interviewed him. And they got video of him explaining his money to people and them taking it happily. And mm -hmm. then they got video in Arkansas of people taking it and knowing exactly what it was. And it was just a lot of fun. Mm. But then the government, like I said, they got their panties in a bunch. Mm -hmm. And they figured out people like this money better. So they raised a stink and they raided a bunch of us. They charged Bernard with counterfeiting. Mm -hmm. This money didn't look anything like U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. It never did. And they tried to convict him of counterfeiting. They dragged it out for over five years. They dragged Jeez. his case out. Finally got into court, I think it was in 2011, mm -hmm. and said that they couldn't convict him of counterfeiting because nobody thought it was U.S. dollars, mm -hmm. but they got him on an old Civil War statute, 18 U.S.C. 486, that makes it a crime to make, utter, or pass any coin or bar of gold, silver, or any other metal, check that out, any other metal, uh, if it's used as current money. And current money is defined as anything used in barter. Okay? So if you're using a gold or silver or any other metal coin or bar, um, theoretically you're committing a felony that can get you five years in federal prison. That law is still on the books today. Now, you hear a lot today about states that are saying, well, we've made gold and silver legal tender. Yes, they have. But go read the fine print on the law. It has to be gold or silver that was authorized by the U.S. Mint, U.S. Treasury, or by Congress. Mm -hmm. So you can't take one of our silver coins and go spend it in Utah or Wyoming or whichever states have that law. In fact, mm -hmm. the only state to date, that has even attempted to make real gold and silver legal tender is South Carolina, which is where our office is. Mm. Uh, they actually put a bill on the floor last year 
that tried mm. to make all gold and silver legal tender. I don't mm. think it passed. I don't think it got anywhere, but it was it was a good start. Mm. That, that's my opinion. Yeah. So anyway, they got down to Bernard's case and they got to sentencing, and the government wanted Bernard to get 27 years in federal prison. We're talking about a man who was 70 years old, so that would be a life sentence. Jeez. Okay. The judge said no. He said this man did not intend to run afoul of that law. Um, nobody thinks his money is government money. Mm -hmm. Said so, yes, while he did violate 18 U.S.C. 486, he was not aware of it, nor had any intent to do so. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm not going to send him to prison. Mm -hmm. He gave him three years of probation with six months of house arrest. And after the first year of probation, he let him, he just released him from yeah. it. So yeah. Bernard is still free and still in the world and still out there talking about the Liberty Dollar whenever he can. Mm. So, well, I didn't see Bernard for several years. And that's because during all of this, my little company in Arkansas, which was an online bank that believed in privacy, was also raided by the government. Mm. And there were several of us that were raided. They got Bernard, they got E-Gold, E-Bullion, me, and several others that were involved in private alternative currencies. Mm -hmm. And out of all of us, only I bad legal advice, accepted a plea bargain that was supposed to guarantee me probation, and only I went to prison. Oh, Everybody no. else went to trial, and none mm. of them went to prison. Mm. But I did, four, I did five years in federal prison oh, for the man. crime of conspiracy to defraud the United States. The government said that we were trying, that my bank was trying to hide people's money from the government, despite the fact that I, Right on our website and everywhere I went, I said repeatedly, we cannot hide your money from the government. Mm. You know, we're a bank. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. In any event, um, long story short, we uh, went several years without contact, me and Bernard. And then one day back in uh, 2018, just coincidentally, I ran across his phone number. Yeah. And I thought, I haven't talked to Bernard in a while. I'm going to give him a call. So I called him. Mm -hmm. And he was shocked and amazed that I called him. Mm -hmm. He was excited. Mm -hmm. And he said, where are you living now, Wayne? I said, well, I'm living in Florida. He said, so am I. <laughs> he said, I'm going to, I'm fixing to go out on a little tour around the country and visit some old friends. So I'm going to stop at your house first. <laughs> so he did. And he met my wife, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And then he went on his trip. And on the way back, he said, Wayne, I'm going to, I'm going to make my last stop on this trip at your house, too. So he stopped at my house on October 1st of 2018. Now, that happens to be the 20th anniversary of the day he launched the Liberty Dollar. Wow. Okay. And he was visiting with me and my wife, Kathy. We all went out to dinner, and they were sitting around the house. And he said, gosh darn it, Wayne, I wish somebody would bring back the Liberty Dollar. Mm. He said, they're not going to let me do it. I wish somebody would. And that beautiful little wife of mine, that I believe you've met, yeah. stuck her hand in the air and said, I will. So that's why she's <laughs> nice. the boss and I get to do most of the work. But <laughs> um, we started uh, working on it back then in 2018. We developed one program that couldn't even get off the ground. And then in 2020, we came up with the Liberty Dollar Financial Association. And that's, we've been growing since then. Mm. So, and we're still growing. Still going. That, that is amazing. So, first of all, sorry they kidnapped you and put you in jail for <laughs> five years. Um, my guess, and I, just for the audience, you didn't harm anybody and you didn't damage any property, right? Nope, did not. Right. Right. So this is the challenge of taking plea deals. You never know. You know, sometimes a plea is helpful, sometimes it's not. But we're glad you're free. And um, you do have the, the oxygen on right now. So we're hoping your health gets stronger and, um, you know, you uh, get through the, the health challenge now and expand your, your association now. I mean, this is so important. And I want to tell the audience the reason, one of the reasons 
that I wanted to bring you on is because I saw a video by Martin Armstrong, the uh, world famous forecaster, and he was showing a book with all these different currencies. I think it was when the uh, Weimar Republic collapsed their currency or hyperinflated yeah. their currency. And so right. if the purchasing power of the dollar is gone, it doesn't work. It's literally like you've seen the photos of the people with the wheelbarrows of money trying to buy right. a loaf of bread. So, and I have on right. my wall a $1 billion Zimbabwe note. Yep. <laughs> so to the people out there who don't understand what's going on, these fiat currencies will become worthless. And it, so it is quite urgent and this is a very important solution. And so you want to talk about what you guys do now? Cause I saw the silver certificate dollars so that people can know how does it work and how can they get involved? Because they, uh, the government's inflating the currency. What is 80% of the U.S. dollars were just printed in the last five years? Something yes. just unacceptable. They're just inflated. Prices are going up. And, um, you know, a lot of reasons for that. But we're looking for solutions on this show. And it's all about voluntary transactions, voluntary living. And so you have this amazing solution. And uh, yeah, your wife was great at the event and explaining it. So for the audience, um, what would they do to get involved and to get some silver certificates to safeguard their savings and protect it from inflation? Well, that's easy. You just go to our website and sign up. And if if you're a member, then make sure you give them your link because we do have a built-in referral program, David. And that referral program uh, pays, it's a small commission, but it's a commission off every fee that we earn off of the, all the members you refer. So, and that's three levels deep, by the way. So the mm -hmm. people you refer, the people they refer, and the people they refer, you're earning commissions. So that's that's how you get involved. But let mm -hmm. me point out a little bit of the reason we do this, okay? Okay. And that is, you're talking about the value of the dollar going down, down, down. Mm -hmm. That started back when we went off the precious metal standard, mm -hmm. all right? Because you can look this up. Mm -hmm. Within a small margin of error, the same portion of an ounce of silver that would buy you a gallon of gas in 1950 will still buy you a gallon of gas in most of the country today. Yeah. The same portion of an ounce of silver that would buy you a dozen eggs in 1900 will still buy you a dozen eggs today. Mm -hmm. And the same portion of an ounce of silver, I'm going to go all the way back to 1798. Mm. The same portion of an ounce of silver that would get you a loaf of bakery bread in 1798 will still buy a loaf of bakery bread today. Mm. Because when you have a commodity that backs your currency that has its own intrinsic value, there's something that sta it stabilizes your money. Mm -hmm. Your money is stable. Now, our silver certificates are not like the ones that Bernard issued. Ours are denominated not in dollars, but in ounces and fractions of ounces. And we start with a one one hundredth ounce and we go all the way up to a five ounce. So we got mm -hmm. the one one hundredth, the one tenth, no, the one one hundredth, the one twentieth, the one tenth, the one quarter, the one half, one ounce, and then the two ounce and five ounce certificates. So these we call these crash cash. Okay, that's how I refer to them. They're crash cash. So when the economy crashes, you can have cash in your wallet or stashed away at home somewhere that you mm -hmm. can spend. And this cash is redeemable for silver mm -hmm. because they are warehouse receipts. Mm -hmm. When you get when you become a member of Liberty Dollar Financial Association, you're able to buy silver from us that we hold for you in our warehouse, mm -hmm. either our contracted warehouse or in our own vault. And that silver backs your account. Now mm -hmm. you have a digital account that you can use to make payments to other members, or you can withdraw cash value by selling the silver back to us. Mm -hmm. You can use our bill payment service and have us cut a check and mail it for you and deduct the value from your silver holdings. Or you can get, the silver itself, our silver bullion, our silver Liberty coins. And you can also get our warehouse receipts. And those warehouse receipts are all backed by silver. 
So whoever, and they're bearer warehouse receipts. So whoever has them in their possession is the owner of the silver that backs them. So anybody can get them and present them to us and say, I want the silver and we're going to give them that silver. That's how it works. Mm. Kathy likes to say the silver is not the money. The silver is simply what backs the money. Mm. Okay. And that's the truth. Since you can't use the silver coins as money without getting in trouble, the warehouse receipts, you can. And even the judge that convicted Bernard said that. He said, warehouse receipts have been used as negotiable instruments for many, many centuries in history. So they're perfectly lawful. There was mm. never anything wrong with Bernard's warehouse receipts. The only thing he did wrong was to issue the coins. And the government had seized over... 16 tons of gold and silver from Bernard and the government was ordered by the judge to give it all back. And to this very day, Bernard is still redeeming silver for warehouse receipts that he issued back then. Wow. Okay. So, and that's even now he's still doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, he has help, but he's still doing it, but it's, it's just a wonderful program. And, mm -hmm. and we love it. We love doing it. We love our members. We love getting to know them and talk to them. Kathy has a blast. She's been all over the country. She's been to Hawaii, going out and meeting our members. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't travel a whole lot anymore, so she gets to do all of that. But it's a lot of fun. It really is. I agree. I mean, you meeting her and seeing your guys' solution is very exciting. Um, so... You set up an account, and then do they do you mail the set the silver certificates to the member? Yeah, if, if they want the silver certificates, we mail them to them. Yes. Now mm -hmm. we are working on a program, uh, and we're working with a couple of groups to establish Liberty Dollar exchanges around the country. Mm -hmm. That would be almost like branch offices, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 we we say that they offer bank like services for people who use Liberty Dollars. For instance, if it's, a, say, a merchant accepts Liberty Dollars silver certificates, the warehouse mm -hmm. receipts, and they need to convert them to cash, well, they could bring them to the exchange, have them credited to their digital account, and then use that digital account to sell silver back to us and get cash to pay their employees, pay their suppliers, whatever. Um, they can also bring the warehouse receipts in and get actual silver you know if they'd rather have the silver in their own possession we right we're happy to ship it to them right so i'm sure that's the things that are going on yeah so so that's probably what the questions might be is because i believe you and i trust you but some people might not so right. they say well we want to hold the silver so you right. can do that too we understand we got no problem with that mm -hmm. so we right. maintain a supply of our silver coins so that anybody who wants their silver, we're ready to chip it out all the time. Mm. That's beautiful. So what the caveat is don't use the coins as money, but use right. the certificates as money. The warehouse receipts, yes. The warehouse receipts. And we call That's... them silver certificates, yes. Okay. Um, th those are the money. Those That's are the, the money. money. And, and I'll tell you something interesting, too, something we've learned. When you get them going in a local community area, more wealth stays in the community because those big box stores like Walmart, they're not going to take them. Mm. Okay. I had Walmart taking them for a short time in Arkansas, mm -hmm. but it turned out the reason they were taking them was because they never made it back to the counting room. Whoever was behind me in line or behind whoever spent them in line always said, I want that in my change. Or okay. the clerks themselves would buy it out and take it home with them, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So it never made it back to the counting room. For over six months, it never got back to the counting room. And then wow. one day, the manager of Walmart called me. He said, I got a bunch of these silver certificates and coins here. What do I do with those? Mm -hmm. I said, well, they're money. He said, but I can't use them. I can't put them in the bank. <laughs> so I made an arrangement to buy them back. And then that started. Uh, I got to negotiate with the vice president of finance for Walmart. And I will say we, we, we had a couple of conversations where I thought we were going to get Walmart to accept them nationwide. 
But then at the last minute, they just said, no, we're not going to do it. And amazingly, it was only a couple of months later that the government started their things. So mm. I'm sure they had something to do with that. Mm. So. You're talking about a few months after your, your conversation with Walmart. That's when the government yes. started going after Bernard. Well, a few months after Walmart headquarters uh, decided they didn't want to get deeply involved. Yes. Then they started the legal stuff against the whole team. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that's probably probably very accurate. Um, one of the questions I had, this is all very, very powerful stuff. Um, how did you get the whole community to accept that? It's a very exciting story. What was that uh, story about? Well, Arkansas is a great place. And a lot of the folks in Arkansas are not stupid. They know what our government is capable of. Trust yeah. me. And they don't <laughs> trust them. So yeah. they saw money that had real value behind it. And they got excited. And mm. uh, it, it, it spread through the town of Berryville re very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then spread throughout a good part of uh, northwest Arkansas. So um, I, I would say we probably went about... 30 mile radius around Berryville, mm -hmm. which is only about 40 miles from Bentonville, where Walmart's headquarters is. So mm, interesting. And yeah. how did you do that? Was it um, you said you brought ads out? Um, I'm interested because I'm in the education world, and mm -hmm. um, you see, mentioned Liberty Dollar University. I think this is very powerful. You know, if you're the um, the executive and the one who's driving growth. We want to empower our audience because this is, you know, getting right. pretty intense on the planet. And so we want to learn your secrets or your ways so that Absolutely. we can go get this stuff out there. Maybe we can make some money together. You know, people out there, affiliate, share this stuff. Um, but I am highly concerned what the, the government is doing right now with the dollar. And yep. I think what they're trying to do is get the central uh, banking digital currency in place before they collapse yep. the dollar entirely. I and, agree. Uh, yeah, according to Martin Armstrong, he said that the government thinks they're going to get the 35% increase because of the black market that's going through cash, right? They say, we want to get this extra tax um, mm -hmm. revenue, and this is some of their justification for doing it. I think the CBDC is about enslavement of the population and uh, basically getting rid of, of freedom. Of course <laughs> right. it is, you know. Right, right. Uh, we all at, know. At the, yeah. at, at the same point, they're going to want to try to outlaw barter, you know, make that a crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, they're already telling you you have to report any barter income. Mm. So, you know, now that's another thing I want to mention about Liberty Dollar Financial Association. First mm -hmm. off, we are not a corporation. We okay. are a business trust mm -hmm. that operates a private member association. Mm -hmm. And a private member association is very powerful because a private mm -hmm. member association, any unincorporated association, is actually protected by the Constitution. From an awful lot of government interference. Mm. See, the Constitution doesn't allow the government to interfere in a private contract. And when mm. a member joins a private member association, they're entering into a contract, a private contract mm. with that association. And therefore, we don't have to jump through a lot of the hoops. We don't have to make a lot of the reports that other companies might have to make. And we don't. We had a uh, an incident not long ago where we got a letter from the IRS demanding that we take one of our members' money and turn it over to them. Mm -hmm. And we said, sure, as soon as you show us the court order that authorizes that. Mm -hmm. And we got a letter a week later that said, never mind, we canceled it. Wow. So then they sent us another one. And we mm -hmm. sent back, said, sure, as soon as you show us the court order, never mind, we canceled that one too. Mm -hmm. you know? Because they know they, they, they cannot interfere with a, with a private contract. And a private member association, even there are several Supreme Court cases that uphold the inviolability of a private member association. So we're we're set up the best way we can be. Well, that's great. That's very exciting. Um, I have a friend who started a private grocery store the last four years during the whole lockdown, and he put it in a private member association, and he went to court. And uh, long story short, they dismissed charges against him because he was selling liquor without a license and he's, he wanted to push it. He was willing to throw down and I think wanted to take it to the Supreme Court. Um, so do you happen to know the case names of the Supreme Court decisions on that by chance? Or we can put it in not, the comments? Not offhand, but uh, okay. 
I can I can get them and send you something later by email. Yeah, that would be great because I, uh, mm -hmm. I I actually put together a book full of information called Absolute Liberty, and they are in that book. Wow! And I'll, I'll send you a copy when we get off here. Absolute Liberty. Absolute Liberty, yes. <laughs> That's a beautiful fact, name. <laughs> I'm going to be launching a podcast under that name in the near future. Oh. Excellent. I have a shirt that says Absolute Freedom. So, um, yeah, let, let me know. I'll be happy to, uh, you know, share that with the people um, because that's what we need right now. Absolute freedom. Our rights come from God. Yes. Life, liberty, pursuit of right. happiness, our property. These ideas, yep. they try to ke keep them secret, you know, through the government schooling systems and the media. And now, thanks to the Internet and consciousness rising, these ideas are getting out and uh, we want to be free. We are free. And it's just in our in our mind that. The government right. has this authority over us, but uh, very excited about the the business trust and the PMA. Um, I, I, one question about that: um, Do you have to have any restrictions on yourself when you market your business trust or your association, or is there is there a slippery slope to marketing a private member association, or is it the same as anything else? Yes. Just like we're doing right now, I can talk about the types of things we offer to our members. Mm. But I cannot go into great detail about what we share with our members on the inside. Mm. Got it. So you talk about the what you do for members. You just can't give them all the finer details right. as a way to market or, right. or persuade them. Once they join, that's all on the inside. They'll see it all. So, mm -hmm. And it's free to join. It doesn't cost them anything. There's no mm. minimums. They don't have to. They don't have to buy a lot of silver to join. Yeah. There's, there's no no upfront cost at all. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about that because let's say someone who maybe they want to buy you know a thousand bucks worth of silver or more. Um, they're concerned just like we are about what's going on, and they're like, okay. So they go to your website, they sign up, they send you a thousand bucks, and then you send them a thousand dollars in silver certificates, or you send them the silver itself. Actually, we, we, it, it goes into their digital account, and then they decide how they want it. Do they want to let it sit in the digital, which means it's in our warehouse, or if they want the silver certificates, warehouse receipts, or if they want the physical silver. They make those decisions, not us. Mm -hmm. so you they can those redeem options. their silver at any time they want. Mm. And what at what uh, price do they buy the silver now? Like the spot, spot price plus a three dollar premium, three dollar per ounce premium. That's how right. we pay our bills and keep our lights on. Yeah, absolutely. And for the audience, you know, some discovery I'm making recently is that money is our spiritual energy, our life force energy. You go out there, you make your money, and you go yeah. give it to somebody. So you want to every dollar you give somebody is actually a spiritual transaction. I think. Um, very precious. They, they, you know, they teach us to be consumers and just, you know, waste our money and all this frivolous stuff. But uh, when you buy money or when you um, use your money, and I guess you can buy it too, um, you're actually giving energy. So we want to give people like you and your organization our money because you're actually providing solutions for the private marketplace, for private people. Um, the audience knows that the, the World Economic Forum and those guys, they said, you're going to own nothing, have no privacy, and be happy. And it's like, no, that's maybe what you guys are going to do, but we're going to be over no, here. Be with, exactly. We're going to have our private money, our private transactions, one our of, private associations. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I like to point out to people, and it, it took me a while to grasp this, money doesn't exist until value is created, whether mm -hmm. it's the value of your labor that you get paid for, or the value of the product that you introduce into the marketplace, or the value of a meal that you cook for somebody, money does not exist until value is created. And mm -hmm. value is created as a fruit of your labor, of human labor. Mm -hmm. Okay? And sometimes animal labor too, but value is created when with the fruit of labor, mm. as the fruit of labor. And value then can be accounted as money. You, mm. uh, one old friend of mine used to say, hey, life's just a game. Money's just the way you keep score. You know? Mm. And there's some truth to that. You know, it's it's how That's we, 
keep track of our accomplishments in the world. Right. So. Yeah. Do you have a working definition for money? That is my working definition. It's when mo money is when value is created and then exchanged. That's what money is to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I like saying, you know, our warehouse receipts are money because that's what they are. They're a representation of an exchange of value. You know? Mm -hmm. No different yeah. than Og the caveman and his clam shells. Mm -hmm. You know? That, that worked great until it, you figured out that everybody else could go pick up clam shells too. You know? Yeah. Then he had right. to find another another symbol for his exchanges, but carrying clamshells was a whole lot easier than carrying wheels or carrying axe heads or right. whatever it was he made to trade for everything else. Right. Yeah. So money's like a technology for exchange and storing value. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Just a, it's just. Yeah, great technology so that you can get what you want, I can get what I want, and we make it a win-win thing. And yep. um, you know, the government's just been printing this with the Federal Reserve, and it's it's diabolical what they've been doing. So this truth is coming out. So I hope people will really look into what you guys are offering as a solution. You know, and I'm interested in like the the local economy as well. So there's a concept called intentional neighborhoods where. Yep. That way, like you said, the money stays in the community, you know, and this is a local concept. Money that... stays local. Yeah. If you, get, if you get a community using Liberty dollars or any other type of alternative currency and it circulates within the community, well, the mom and pop stores start seeing more profit, more business. Uh, in Berryville, we actually had stores that were close to going out of business because of Walmart that ended up thriving and even hiring help. So. That's very good news. Back in Berryville, Arkansas. Yeah. And even myself, like they didn't teach us about this basic stuff about currency and money printing in college. I got a business degree. They didn't teach us about these things because they want us to be a manager in some corporation rather than build our own business. Right. So when, so when you go to Walmart or you go to Amazon or you go to some big corporation, you give them the money, that then goes to their headquarters and yeah, leaves the community. In a lot of cases, it community. goes to China. Mm. You know, I mean, a lot of the big box stores do most of their banking outside the U.S. That money's mm. left our country. It's mm -hmm. not here doing our country any good anymore. That's right. Yeah. So for the audience, consider getting involved in this type of yep. silver certificate and help build it the wealth it. in your own local community. That's help right. your neighbors, your friends. You know what? Merchants need to understand. Their customers are the people they grew up with, the people they see every day, the mm. people they go to church with, their kids go to school with, with your kids, you know. That's, mm -hmm. that's the people that are your customers. If you can get them to understand that keeping the money local helps the entire community, they're going to get on that bandwagon. That's right. You're talking about better community spirit. You're talking about people thriving. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm. it's a good thing. So not only is it these silver certificates retain the purchasing power and protect right. you in case of currency collapse, it actually increases the energy, increases the uh, prosperity in the local community. It does, yes. Wow, that's they two great two great reasons to get involved. And uh, there's probably a lot more. I mean, just, um, I wish are. I would have... Yeah, I got the server certificate to show the people because it's like... It's, I wish I'd have thought to have some here, but I, I <laughs> well, don't have um, any with me. Maybe you can send me a photo of some and um, and we'll post I it will here. I do that, yes. Yeah, in the comments and so people can, can see it here in the, in the details because it is so mind-blowing. You know, I've been in the freedom community for a few years and I've seen other ones, but not with the organization and articulation that you and your wife have and the story, you know, with Bernard and... It's a great saga, you know, and I'm so glad right. that uh, you guys are all out because this solution needs to get out to the world in a big way. And uh, we're facing some big challenges, but there's solutions. So, you know, there is hope. It's just a matter of getting the people out, informing them and educating them. And did you have you, you said the people in Arkansas are pretty smart, so they understand what's going on with the banking and the government. So did you just go business to business to say, hey, we have these certificates? What was that? I uh, did, the, the I average did that. Mm -hmm. And then I promoted it on radio. I did a 
I did a uh, a radio money trivia show. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, three days a week, I would ask a trivia question, and the first three people that got the answer right could come by my office and get a free silver coin, and that built a lot of interest about what was this new money people were talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had, I, I I went out to businesses, and businesses came to see me, mm -hmm. and it got so hectic. I hired a salesman to go out and talk to more businesses. Mm. And it just, it didn't cost me anything to sign up. So they did, you know, just agreed for the business to take the money and offer it out in change. And I mean, we had, we had people that didn't understand it. And I had a few people that would come through my door saying, I don't want this stuff. I want the green cash. Okay, fine. I'll give it to you. No problem. Mm. You know, <laughs> but you, you'd be better off with that. They'd be back within a couple of weeks saying, can I get some more of that silver stuff? That's sure, perfect. no problem. Glad to have you. <laughs> you know? Yes. And are you still running Liberty Dollar University? Oh, no, no, no. That was that was connected to that back then. That we have the talked one. about starting something new. Mm -hmm. But right now we're concentrating on trying to get our exchanges going. Mm -hmm. So, And I hate to yeah. do this, but I'm I'm getting a little worn out. And I've got a couple other things i got to get done today. So. Yes. I need to cut it short. Absolutely. Well, yeah, thanks for taking some time, Wayne. I appreciate what you're doing, sir, on the earth and providing these types of solutions, you and your wife, and uh, for being a, a courageous man. You know, it's very important that people realize that you don't have to get permission from the government to do what you think is right. And uh, if you think it's right to do the private money exchange in this way, then do it and get involved and contact them. And uh, where can people find out more about your um, organization and how can they reach you? Well, you need to get on there and get signed up and get your own link so that mm. you can you can put it on uh, on this and let people sign up under you. Right. OK, so then I will put I will get a link and I will put it there. That way you can support me, the audience member, and right. also indirectly Wayne and everybody make it a win win. And then you can get your own affiliate and go out and share it with other people. And uh, yep. maybe we can, you know, make make a few bucks together while we're empowering people and their savings and creating abundance and prosperity in yep. local communities that sounds like a great win-win triple win all right excellent David, thank you for your time but i've got to go absolutely when you have a great day and thank you for you joining too. us on the voluntary living show where we are building a world based on consent self-ownership and freedom we'll see you all on the next video bye everybody all right bye-bye